now in the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is a joy. Now, you know that gospel song says, oh, happy day. <laughs> oh, happy day. Rob in East Carolina and Church of Jesus Christ, it is a joy, a joy and a happy day. First, I want to, on your behalf, say a word of thanks to the seventh bishop of East Carolina. His formal name is Clifton, <laughs> but y'all know him as Danny. We thank God for his faithful witness as bishop of this diocese, and we thank God for one who has failed retirement successfully, <laughs> your bishop provisional, Bishop Lee. We thank God for them. You have been led well faithfully. This is a good, strong, and healthy diocese because of them and their predecessors and because of you, the people of God here. To God be the glory, and we thank y'all. Now to our brother here. I hadn't met Rob um, and didn't know him, um, but like you, I read up on him and read about Sandy and the family and everything and watched his video and um, still hadn't met him after you elected him, but was as curious as you were. And I happened to be, the next week, I happened to be in uh, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota at a preaching conference. It was an ecumenical preaching conference and only a few Episcopalians, well, preaching, so there were only a few of us there. but. <laughs> But anyway, it was a large conference, and so I gave a little talk, and after the talk, a gentleman came up to, I didn't tell Rob this, a man came up to me and introduced himself, and I don't remember his name. Um, anyway, he came up and introduced himself, and I believe he was in your dad's parish and knew you growing up. Um, anyway, he went on and on talking about you, and I was thinking, are you talking about Jesus or Rob Scurvy? <laughs> I mean, I was really... <laughs> And then he finally um, kind of ended it. He said, because I, I said I haven't had a chance to meet him yet, so I haven't had a chance to get to know him. He said, when you meet him, you're going to love him. East Carolina, I just want to pass on the message. <laughs> you're going to love him, and he's going to love you. And together, you're going to love each other, this world, and the God who created us all. And in the power of that love for the God who created us, and in the power of that love for each other as children of that one God and creator of us all, we will find the power to change this world from the nightmare it often is into something closer to the dream that God intends. Oh, I want to talk about the power of love. I'm going to be brief. It's so nice to be at home. <laughs> let, let, let me do it this way. There's, there's a song, and, and, and you know it well. It's, it's an old spiritual that says, if you cannot preach like Peter, and you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus, how he died to save us all. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Jesus said it this way, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. Or as another biblical scholar, Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> said when the power of love overcomes the love of power, then the world 
will know peace. Turn and tell your neighbor he's going to talk about love this morning. Turn and tell your neighbor. Just turn and t- this is Episcopal evangelism. Tell somebody something. Turn, turn and tell your neighbor he's going to talk about love. <laughs> talk about love. Rob doesn't know it yet, but while he will certainly spend a great deal of time with learned theologians, you will probably spend more time with learned lawyers. And you will actually find those conversations quite enlightening. You'll be in good company. You may notice that Jesus spent a lot of time in conversations with lawyers. And it was actually a lawyer who came up to him. And whether it was a trick or trap question or genuine inquiry, we don't know. But he came up to Jesus and said, great teacher, tell us which is the greatest of all of the laws and the great edifice of the the law of Moses, an edifice that included some 613 statutes. Tell us what is the greatest law in the law of Moses. And that is what prompted Jesus to reply, this is it. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself in the same way. Everything depends on that. Everything that you find in the Hebrew Scriptures, everything in the Christian New Testament, everything in the religious architecture of faith, it all depends on love. And if it does not have love, it is not of God. Duke Ellington said it this way, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Right? <laughs> and I am I'm convinced that 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 the power of this love, Jesus knew what he was getting at, that that love, um, and I'm not talking about I mean a Valentine's Day. I mean, that is a derivative of the love I'm talking about. It's related to it. But I'm talking about something bigger than that, that this titanic power and reality of love has the power to heal. It has the power to liberate. It has the power to save. It has the power to lift up that which has been cast down. Love has the power. It is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. And I suspect it has it in part for a reason that I had not thought of until recently. If you had asked me a couple of weeks ago what the opposite of love is, I probably would have said hatred or hate. I mean, which in some sense makes some sense. I mean, that that is true. But the more I look at what Jesus actually says, he's quoting Moses, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor in the same way. It occurs to me that the opposite of love is selfishness. The opposite of love is self-centeredness. The opposite of love is unenlightened self-interest. The opposite of love is all about me and to heck with you. The opposite of love, see y'all getting quiet now. The (laughs) opposite, right? Right? The opposite of love is this selfishness that, that requires the self to be the center of the world and excluding the rest of the world. And, and if you look at what, what Jesus actually, uh, by the way, that's really what original sin is about. Hubris, a false, self-centered pride. I mean, that's what the tradition is really talking about. I just gave you all a good theology lesson in language you could actually understand. <laughs> that, that's really what the tradition is really getting at. That, that, and if you look at how Jesus frames his response to the lawyer, he actually implies that. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul and Mark's gospel adds all your strength and you should love your neighbor in the same way with all of yourself like Billy Holiday used to sing that song all of me why not take I know there's somebody old enough to remember Billy Holiday don't act <laughs> right right with the whole self now stay with me because if you if I love God with all of me you don't need a special stewardship sermon Oh, oh, I'm preaching now. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see, so I love God with my whole self. There's no room. There's nothing left for self-centeredness. If I love you with 
all of myself. There is no room for self-centeredness because it is the very nature of, of love to move beyond the self, to seek first the good and the welfare of the other. And, and here's the miracle. The miracle happens that as I do that, seeking the good and the welfare of the other, I make room and space for myself. And we discover that there's plenty good room. Plenty good room. Plenty good room for all of God's children. Oh, if you cannot preach like Peter and you cannot pray like Paul, you just tell the love of Jesus how he died to save us all. Oh, man, we're talking about some powerful stuff here. And there's a reason. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 says it this way. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. And those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. And they say love is God. God is love. God is the source. God is the definition. God is the origin of, of love. And love has this titanic, incredible, it is the most powerful force in all of the universe because the source is the source of everything that is. See, see the truth of the matter is now, the only reason we are here is not because of our utilitarian value, not because of our particular usefulness, Right? I mean, think, think about it for a moment. I mean, I, 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 the, the truth is, let me say it this way. I, I was the new priest at uh, St. James in Baltimore before becoming bishop, and I was, um, it was the first Sunday I was there, and I was in the sacristy, and people you know, were coming up and introducing themselves to new priests, and somebody would say, I'm so-and-so, and I'm Charles the Altergill, I'm so-and-so, I'm lay readers, I'm so-and-so, I'm acolytes. Uh, I'm so-and-so, I'm head of the choir. And so I've got this one gentleman, um, Mr. Ronald David Scott, who's now going on to glory, dear man. But anyway, Mr. Scott came up, put his hand out, and he said, Father, I'm Ronald David Scott, and I'm the treasurer. <laughs> I said, well, I'm really, I'm very glad to meet you. Um, <laughs> and he said, I'm in the B group. And I said, Mr. Scott, I don't know what the B group is. He said, I'd be here before you got here. I'll be here while you're here, and I'll be here when you're gone. <laughs> Rob, I got to tell you, Mr. Scott was there when I was made bishop. He said, Father, I'm still in the B group. You're gone. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Um, God, if you will, is the ultimate B group. Stay with me now. God is the Alpha and the Omega. That's what the Bible says. God is the beginning and the end. God is the one who was and is and is to come. God is God the Holy Trinity. God is God the Holy, right? Isn't he still, right? And, and, and the Holy Trinity means that we have how many gods? Y'all can say that with more conviction. It is still one, right, right. We, we, we have one God, and yet we know this one God to be God the God the Son. God the Holy and yet we only have one God. Now St. Augustine of Hippo and I have a, a love hate not love hate but have a relationship with St. Augustine. Sometimes I'm with him and sometimes I don't know what he's talking about. But on a good day Augustine of Hippo explained the Trinity by saying how is it possible for there only to be one God and yet this one God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier however you say it. How is that possible? He said it's possible because God is in God's essence and person a community of love. And it is the nature of love to create space for the other and in so doing to make space for the self. And when that happens, the miracle happens. Y'all with me now? Divisions are overcome. A folk who at once were enemies are now neighbors. And Jesus says, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. The truth of the matter is love has the power to overcome our jangling Discourse. Love has the power to bind us up. Love has the power to bring, I'm going to get in trouble now, Republicans <laughs> and Democrats. <laughs> Folk who watch Fox News 
and MSNBC, love has the power. And I remember learning as a child, learning as a child that old song, I sing a song of the saints of God, patient and brave and true, toiled and fought and lived and died for the Lord they loved and knew. The second verse says, they loved their Lord so dear, so dear, and his love made them strong and they followed the right for Jesus sake the whole of their good lives long love has the power to lift us up it's the power to set us free it has the power to teach us the way of justice it has the power to show us the way of compassion it has the power to guide us to a blessedness. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst that righteous justice might prevail. Blessed are you when you're persecuted just because you love somebody. Love's got the power to lift I'm going to sit down now. <laughs> My. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I was, was, uh, <laughs> anyway, I was, uh, by, my folk hail from, from Wenton, North Carolina, from in this diocese, and uh, my, uh, I grew up in Buffalo. My daddy was an Episcopal priest, had a church there. We considered ourselves uh, missionaries to the north. Um, <laughs> but Grandma and Aunt Leon and all the group, they were here. And I started to say all the clan, but I don't think that's the wrong family. <laughs> that's, the, that's the wrong <laughs> Anyway, they were all in Wenton, and I remember spending most of my childhood summers here in Wenton. And, and Grandma used to love this one particular song that they would sing. I grew up Episcopalian, but Grandma was a died in the wool Rock Reef Baptist. And Grandma used to love that song that, that, that says, I was sinking deep in sin. Y'all know that one? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the distant shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. Oh, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else would help. Love lifted me. A few weeks ago, when a gunman entered the Parliament of Canada. Prior to entering the Parliament, that gunman stopped and, and killed a soldier who stood guard at the Canadian National Memorial. As that happened, right before that happened, a woman attorney, another lawyer, had gone past the memorial and was walking, I think, to the revenue building for a meeting. When she heard the gunshot, she turned around and ran back in the direction of the gunshot. She had served in the Canadian military, in the reserves, for a number of years as a medic, so she knew gunshot, and she went back to help. And When she got there, there were several people helping the soldier, the wounded soldier, who was still alive, but barely. They were trying to help, and it turned out all of them had some first aid training. Anyway, she bent down with the rest of them, and they did what they could to try to keep him alive until the paramedics could get there. And they worked on him, and they knew to talk to him. Another soldier said, you hang in there, buddy. You hang in there. And they would work, and the others would talk to him. And she started to talk to him at one point when she wasn't physically working on him. And she said, your family loves you. Your military family loves you. Your country loves you. And we who are working on you, we love you. 
And then she just said, you are so loved. You are so loved. You are so loved. My friends, that's the gospel. That's our message. That's our mission. To tell this tired old world and all of God's children, you are so loved. If you cannot preach like Peter and you cannot pray like Paul, you just tell the love of Jesus how he died to save us all. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin. Sick.